Hey guys, what's up? So, I thought I'd show you how to home anodize with this uh, red dye here. I've done it a few times in the past, and I think a lot of people just overthink it. It's not that difficult, actually. Uh, you just need uh, some battery acid, some sulfuric acid, uh, some material wire. So the material has to be the same material as what you're doing, like aluminum. You need aluminum wire if you're going to do an aluminum piece, or steel with steel. Uh, because what you're doing here, taking, I'll get more into that later, but you're taking material from one side and moving to another. You're basically creating a coat, a porous coat. Um, but I'm also going to use this red dye, navy blue. And you need some sort of battery charger, some kind of voltage source. Uh, nothing too high. Uh, I'm usually about 1 amp, depending on the size of it. 12 to 16 volts should work. Um, but let me get it going here. And uh, But the, one of the most critical things is actually the preparation of the part. All right, so right now I have the uh, I have a nitro engine head that I sandblasted in my uh, sandblast right there, and right now I'm ultrasonic cleaning. So the most important thing is prep. You can't have any sort of oil or grease, or that will uh, prevent the stuff from sticking to it. Right, so you know your part is clean when you don't see any water. Like if the water runs off the metal, then you know it's greasy. So you got to make sure that the water is basically sticking to the metal. So I'm going to pour the add battery acid in here. I really smell it though. Okay. Pour water in there. This is distilled water, by the way. Yeah, I don't want to get the stuff in your eyes. <laughs> Or your skin, or like hell. All right, that's good right there. Soak in a little bit. Wait for the part to clean. And one of the most important parts is uh, once you get the part out of the, you know, ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna put a glove on because I don't want to get any sort of fingerprints or oil in this thing. Anything that prevent the metal from uh, taking the uh, sacrificial piece of metal. All right, so I'm not gonna get into the whole anode cathode thing. The part goes on the positive side. The sacrificial metal goes on the negative side. And what you're doing is you're attracting from the negative side to the positive side. So we're gonna create a thin layer from this, a thin layer of this sacrificial material is gonna end up on the part. And we're trying to create like a little porous part to absorb the uh, dye. And uh, you don't wanna over, if you over amp it, it's gonna, the pores will be too big. You wanna kinda create like a, like, kinda like a small fine pore that will actually absorb the uh, ink. So if I was actually, uh, you know, removing rust with electrolysis, they would be opposite. I'd be trying to take a material away, so the part would be negative, and the sacrificial material would be positive. So the electrons are attracted to the positive side, so you're going this way. If you're trying to remove rust, electrolysis, you're going the other way. All right, let's get this going. I'm going to turn this up. I'll bring this up to about one amp. Okay, and you can see the material going on. I'm going to bring this amperage down here to about one amp. Alright. Yeah, it's, it's basically uh, putting off hydrogen gas. It's like you're charging a battery. It's very toxic. It's a better look at the uh, process. So we're taking material off the sacrificial material and putting it on the actual part. A thin layer, a porous material. All right, well, so I went back to the store and got some denim blue. The other stuff was just too dark. Wow, how dark that is. Yeah, I'm hoping for like like majestic blue, but it's hard to find, man. It's it's uh, I mean, coronavirus going on, so I'm gonna stir that up and see what that looks. All right, it's almost like a purple. All right, this has been going for an hour, so I'm gonna turn it off. And every single, it's just kind of like trial and error because every single part is different. So every part reacts differently. But even though you think you're clean, look at that dark stuff. I'll dip this in some water. And one of the things I do differently is, at least in other videos I've seen, is I let this thing dry. See, it's just it's like covered in dirty spots. Like man, that's why it's like you need to Yeah, see those spots? 
this thing dry. Anyway, I don't have a good feeling about this, but. Alright, well, let's soak. Hmm, maybe. Yeah, throw the water. Sorry, my kitchen is a disaster. But yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, it's got to sandblast it. Start all over again. I like to put it right in my water. Let it rinse. Is that for about 30 minutes? See what happens. Here's an example when you go too aggressive with the amperage. It, the pores become too big and the, the dye doesn't stick, doesn't go into it. So I have to redo this. Right, so if you get that little roughness, that's toothpaste, it's really quite abrasive. Rub that in, see if I can polish it up. Alright, so here's how the anodizing turned out. It's sort of like a purplish, some marks on there. I sanded the edges to kind of make it look more like a, the way like a nitrogen would look. It's going on my OS 10 restoration, but uh, I might sand with this, like start all over again and basically sand down there. See, there's a lot of imperfections on the top of the metal. Well, that actually creates a. So if you want actually like the shiny, like that type of service, or even that piece of metal right there. See, it's nice and shiny. You need to actually make this thing like a mirror finish before you anodize it. So that's the back piece. All right, well, that's how you do it. Home oh, anodizing. Not too difficult. I mean, D, or the writ dye is definitely not the best. So, um, but it works, though. All right, cool.